there's a whole bunch of nebulae in Messier's catalog. And nebulae means different things because, of course, some of them aren't really... So nebulae just means something that's sort of fuzzy, diffuse. And, of course, some of the nebulae aren't really nebulae at all. They're just collections of stars. But some of the, the nebular objects in Messier's catalogue really are nebulae. And this illustrates the three different types of nebulae there are, all in a single object. I mean, its popular name is it's called the Triffid Nebula, um, not named after the strange man-eating plants from the book of the same name, but actually because it has this threefold symmetry to it, this kind of three petals to it, if you like. So you've actually got an emission nebula, so this reddish stuff near the bottom, and that's because there's a cluster of stars, some of which are very bright, embedded within that cloud of gas and dust. And the light from those stars is actually exciting that gas and making it emit. So that's an emission nebula where the gas itself is doing the emission. Then up here, this blue stuff at the top is a reflection nebula, and that's where the light from the stars is coming out, hitting that gas and dust, and being scattered off towards us, so we see this scattered light coming our way. And then the third type of nebula is an absorption nebula, and that's what these dark bands are here. This is where there's a particularly thick collection of the sooty material that makes up interstellar dust, which is just absorbing the light from behind. So in this one object, we have all three types of the classic sort of nebulae, emission, reflection, and absorption nebula, all in one object. So this is the same region of space as imaged with the Spitzer telescope, which is a small telescope in space working in the infrared part of the spectrum. You can see the same structure, there's this threefold symmetry to this thing, but everything's changed in that what were the dark bits are now some of the bright bits. And that's because that dust, which is absorbing starlight, the dust gets warmed up and then it re-emits it in the infrared part of the spectrum. So you can actually see this dust being emitted. And then actually rather harder to see, but maybe you can pick out a few of them, is that embedded within here, there are a whole bunch of little dots which are actually the stars of the cluster itself. So with this infrared telescope, you can see through a lot of the obscuring material and actually see the cluster of stars inside.